Hi everybody, Sarah Craig here with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and this week we are doing eyes. I have Keenan here doing camera. Hello. I have Taylor here who's painting and coloring and penciling with us. Uh, and hopefully you guys are familiar with her by now. She taught us the cherry tutorial, the horse tutorial, and now together we're gonna do the eyes. So I'm excited for this project. We are going to be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we are going to do a light uh, like layer of pencil, watercolor pencil, across the skin, okay? Um, and then we are going to do a second layer of, coloring, of uh, watercolor pencil on the skin and then start the eyes. Our third step is starting to now define the form. So we would be adding um, shadows and darker values using watercolor. Um, fourth step, we will be doing another watercolor wash, eyebrows. And then our last step, we're just gonna be doing kind of details. So eyelashes, the little hairs, like any last minute things. Um, we are using three colors, three watercolors for this project. So I have Azure Blue, Magenta, and Honey Brown. And then we will be using all five of our watercolor, um, or all six of our watercolor pencils. So the code for this yellow one is 107. The green code is 166. The blue code is 147. The brown code is 176. And the red code is 121. And these are um, Gold Favor uh, Aqua from Faber Castell. These are the watercolor pencils that we are using. Oh, also I have black. Sorry, I forgot black. Black. Ooh. Code 199. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and the brand of paint that we are using is called Dandelion Paint Company. It's our own brand of paint. And if you're a subscriber, it's custom mixed and made for us every single month. Um, so you can find that on our website, letsmakeart.com. But if you're having trouble finding that brand of paint anywhere else, that's why it's our own house paint. So special. I never mentioned that, and I'm really sorry. So I'm going to be better about mentioning the brands that we use. Nice. Um, we're using a round two and a round six paintbrush for this project. We also have an outline, graphite paper, um, and paper towel. So those are all good things to have. Okay, before we get started, I just wanna put a disclaimer out here that this is a more difficult project, okay? So if this is your first time painting, if this is your first time using watercolor pencils, if this is your first time using watercolor, I highly suggest that you put this project away for a later time when you're more comfortable with the mediums because this is going to be a little bit more difficult. If you're still here after I said that, you're a rebel and I like you. <laughs> <laughs> you brave, brave scoundrel. And let's try this, even if it is your first time, why not? No, I highly suggest doing like, you know, getting more familiar, but you know, sometimes we want to live on the edge and I get that. Yeah. Just if that is the if that is the path that you take, just don't be upset with yourself if you don't love how it turns out, okay? That's all I'm saying. So if we if you want to be just try something wild, I'm into that, but like let's just be kind to ourselves then if that's what we do because we recognize that this is a difficult thing. Okay. Wait, so, to go with that, I have a question. Yes. What do you suggest is a great way to start if it is their first time? If it's your very first time, I would highly suggest looking at the beginner series videos for watercolor, also the beginner series video for watercolor pencil, and then do a couple of the tutorials that we have on our YouTube channel. Um, some good beginner ones are the carrots that can be done with any mm. medium. Um, if you're interested in color mixing, we release that color mixing tutorial that's super helpful to understand what kinds of colors you can mix. And we have, gosh, probably over 200 tutorials on that channel. So just like take a stab at a few. 
um, and just like kind of get used to water and watercolor a little bit, how they work before you attempt something um, this difficult. Because form and people and skin tones are tricky. So I'm just giving that tricky. warning. Tricky. <laughs> okay. So let's do our outline first and then we will do our oath and then we'll get into it. So I have my outline here. And I'm going to put my graphite paper shiny side down on my watercolor paper. Your watercolor paper is going to have two sides. If you're using like a cold press or a rough watercolor paper, you want to paint on the side that is more textured. Okay. Hot press watercolor paper is very smooth. I struggle with hot press. I do. Mm. Some people love it. I struggle with it. The one time I've used it, the tape got stuck to it and ripped it. Ooh. Was that, not a fan. Was that... Geometric, geometric landscape. landscape yes it was okay and then i'm just going to use i'm going to take a note out of taylor here she's using a watercolor pencil to trace which is genius because <laughs> these are colored so you can see where you've traced i just want to point out i have a lot of hash marks here hash marks are where they crisscross you do not have to trace those in i do that to signify to you guys that those areas are the areas we need to focus on for darker values when we're adding our second and third layers okay so you don't need to trace them onto your paper what we are tracing is the eyebrows and the eye shape now watercolor paper gets better with age so if you have been subscribed to us for a bit, I would try and keep with that same paper that you've had. Graphite paper. Graphite paper. <laughs> did I not say graphite paper? watercolor paper. Yeah. Oh, I that did? That might be a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for correcting me. You're I'm welcome. really sorry. That would be really rough. Um, <laughs> you only use one watercolor paper. <laughs> I've used the same did. watercolor paper, paper for years. <laughs> That's why I'm so good. It's like an inch thick, <laughs> just layered of paint. <laughs> uh, thank you for catching that. Your graphite paper is reusable. So try and reuse that because it, it just doesn't get as like touchy uh, with age. Which is usually, you know, true to most things. Well, that unless you're stubborn. Yeah. Then you may be touchy to a lot of other things. Keenan, would you consider yourself stubborn? Yes. Yeah? Uh-huh. You're stubborn when it comes to, like, fast breaks. <laughs> okay. That's because they're the best candy bar. They are not. Then why are they the most sold candy bar in Northern America? That is really? not true. <laughs> you made that up. I'm Taylor, don't fall for <laughs> him. Taylor's like, are you serious? The word he <laughs> say. He can say anything, and I would believe him, like, every single time. <laughs> I have learned not to do that. <laughs> In the beginning, when I didn't know Keenan very well, I believed him on a lot of things. If it's an argument that uh, I don't want to lose, then yeah, <laughs> I'll start making up facts. I think it's, it's your, the tone of your voice. It's very convincing. It is know? very convincing, yeah. Okay. Just going to check my outline here. What? Class. My cardigan is like my It's a gorgeous so cardigan. Okay. Oh, that was a good call though. Long sleeves and paint do not yeah. mix I'm well. So oversized. I've learned that. Okay. Sarah has a pirate shirt that she wears occasionally and it always gets paint on. Is it the black one? Pirate shirt? Keenan. I don't know. It has like sleeves that are really flowy. I like a bell sleeve. Yeah. Bell sleeve. The pirate sleeve shirt. Why do I feel like my left eye seems so much less? Oh, because my eyelashes aren't as dark. Mm. Those eyebrows are on fleek. Yeah, they are. <laughs> okay. Well, let's just go for it. I'm ready. Ready? Yep. Okay. Move that. A piece of tape stuck to my paper. Okay. Let's do our oath. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise, I promise to be, be kind, kind to myself. myself. I promise not to compare my work. Promise not, not to compare, to compare my, work. my work. And I promise to have <laughs> and I fun. Promise I to have fun. fun. <laughs> it's just so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Now, before we get started, I'm going to ask you guys to do something kind of weird but it will be helpful. So please just humor me. Do I have to do it too? Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to feel around your eyes. Okay? I knew it. Tina was already doing it. I was already it. doing it. I was like, <laughs> so I just want you to think, like, because we're only focusing on this area on our on the eyes, okay? We're not doing the whole face. But there are a lot of different planes within this. So I want you to feel where your cheekbones are. I want you to feel where your eye sockets are. I feel above, too. Feel where you can feel your eyeballs kind of protruding under your eyelids. Think about your brow bone. Even like your forehead here. Feel... And I just want you to feel the different planes. And by planes, I mean, are they on the same level or different levels? So if you're on your forehead, t you're not doing I'm it, sorry. Taylor. I'm sorry, I was distracted, Keenan was going <laughs> <laughs> Are your eyes open, Taylor? I'm sorry. Proceed. So I'm just saying like, I know that this is silly and maybe, you, but if you're gonna attempt, this is, when you're attempting to create form, it's so much better to understand the structure of it so then you know why you're putting the values where you're putting them. So when we're painting our eyes, you'll notice that it's darkest kind of like around the eyes here and it's highlighted in the middle. And that's because we have bones protruding here. So they're on a different plane, which is closer to our light source. So they're a lighter value where the areas like our eye sockets, like between where the bone is and where our eyeballs kind of pop out there, it's just soft and it actually goes in. And that's why those are our darker values. And it's those things that you guys need to pay attention to if you really wanna create three-dimensional form. That's how we do it. Because if we create a single value that, that goes across this entire thing, there will be no dimension or depth and it will not look like a human or a person. It would just look really flat and so, the biggest thing to portraiture and form is dimension. So like, I'm just, I, we're gonna be doing a lot of layers and a lot of values and your painting will inform you as you go of what you need to do. So I'm just doing a call out now. Those are the things that I'm gonna be paying attention to. And then as you guys go into your own personal work where maybe you're ready to do portraiture, maybe you're ready to do things like that, then as you're looking at your subject of whatever you're painting, you'll notice how their bone structure is different. How me and Taylor's eyebrows are shaped differently. How me and Keenan noses are shaped differently. Like all of those things will inform your painting, right? Because that is what makes us look like who we are, is what we look like. <laughs> That's good I started stuff. really strong and then at the end there, I kind of just... I was falling along. <laughs> okay, so. Let's get started. So, really important question. Yeah. Can you flare your nostrils? Absolutely, I can. Okay, good. Just check it. Can you? No. Maybe unintentionally. I feel like I... <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Was that good? Your mouth was also moving. <laughs> 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 oh, Funny thing with that is that when you're doing portraiture and if you make the nostril holes too big and dark and then this area around the nostrils too dark, it will look like their nose is flared. Their nostrils are flared. Well, that's a fun tip. Yeah, so I'm just saying like if you're if you're painting someone and their nose looks like this, <laughs> They're it's, angry. Be it's because there's too much dark value going on a little bit and you need to what? adjust that. Learn that lesson. Okay, so... Basically, I have six watercolor pencils here. I'm going to do a light little uh, layer with each color across the whole uh, area, okay? Um, I just wanna call out, this is different than how we did the cherries and the horse because I am not pressing dark. And the reason why I started with this is these colors aren't super vibrant when they're mixed together. And even a pair, uh, compared to the liquid watercolors, these are just not as vibrant in color. And so that's why I thought it would be a good idea to do skin tones with these because then they're a little bit more toned down so it's not as scary painting skin. So then you're not like purple or you know, whatever. So anyways, I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna start with yellow. And um, I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm just gonna kinda do a light wash. I say wash, but really it's like a layer around 
I'm gonna be avoiding the eyeballs, but you can go over the eyebrows because we're gonna be painting those anyway, so. Okay, I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm you gonna... go down on the eyelids, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I'm doing basically this area here. I'm doing that here, okay. If you guys wanna keep going on the form, you're welcome to, but I'm just trying to focus on one thing at a time here. Uh, next, I'm gonna do red. Is there a particular order that you're doing? Like, is there a reason? Not really. Okay. <clears throat> Whose eyes are these? <sighs> Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, they're riveting. Next I'm doing blue. And I know that usually I like I say like look at the form of what you're doing and like make your pencil lines or brush strokes like adhere to that form. I'm not doing that yet. That's an important step. I'm not doing it yet. Okay, and then I'm gonna do brown. But really light brown. Like don't press too hard. And actually for now I'm gonna skip black. If you already did black, it's not a big deal, but I'm gonna skip it. Why? Um, because black blended out is just going to add gray. Okay. And uh, I don't know if I need gray right now. Okay. Ooh, you don't know if you need gray? Like, I want to blend out this color first. Yeah. And then I'll decide. If you need to add if gray? If I need to add gray. That's a really interesting way to phrase that. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. So. Green. Did we do green? We didn't do green yet. Thank you. Green. Top five favorite things that are green. Go. Uh, trees. Apples. Uh, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> uh, I love Brussels sprouts with some good bacon. If they're cooked right. Yeah. Um, um, Why can I not? Oh my gosh, that? arugula. Arugula is my favorite Classic leafy green. Classic lettuce. Classic what am lettuce. I at? Four. Four. Uh, uh, a pink color. Okay, that's five. Uh, Okay. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Taylor, you're up. Um, uh, <laughs> you know what? You take your time. <laughs> it's <probably> okay. Best. <laughs> so we're going to now grab our round six, and I'm going to blend out this color. And actually, before I do that, this is just me. You don't, it's not necessary. But because our last color on top was green, I have a feeling that this is going to read really green when we blend it out. So I'm going to do one more layer of red just to balance it. And you could be asking, well, Sarah, why would you add green? in the first place and I'm just saying I don't skin tones are funny because it also depends on the person some person's skin tones actually read green um, some of them read like blue some of them read pink some of them read some of them read like purples like there's so many different colors going on that that's why I like to add all of the colors instead of just sticking with like brown and black because that's not actually true. And if you look closely to your own skin color, um, and like for me, I'm really, really fair. And so like my skin's kind of transparent. So even around like close to my eyes or like on my wrist, you can see my veins through and things like that. So that's where like I straight up have blue and green on my skin tone right here. And everybody is different and so like that's why I like to just add all of the colors and then blend out and then see and go with it. It's like the undertone, you know, when, um, I don't know the technical part of it, but when you go pick out like foundation for makeup yes. and the undertone of the color of your skin. Well, I get that. Yep. Okay. So for the nose, I'm going to start blending up this way. So you can see mixed together, I kind of have this really pretty, like, um, tan color hmm. in some areas it is more one tone than the other that does not bother me because I feel like that is true and then when we get to the top here at the edge you can just do an unfinished edge here I'm not I'm not focusing too much on these on these edges And then I'm gonna I'm gonna blend out 
around the eye. And this is where I'm kind of going to start paying attention to this form. So I'm kind of doing uh, rounded circle brush strokes around the eyeball. You skipping the waterline of the eye. Which one? Right. The, like the, this under part where the eyelashes are? Yes. Okay. Yes. Taylor, do you have a favorite green thing yet? Oh gosh, I forgot I was supposed to be the new one. It's okay, I just want you to call him out immediately when he comes <clears> in. <throat> All right. So again, this is going to be a fairly light wash. And the, the goal with this first step really is just to lay our initial color down. Okay, that's, that's really what we're trying to do. Um, so if yours is blotchy, if, if there's hard lines, if it's uneven, don't stress. Okay, this is one layer of many layers that we are doing. So I don't want you to stress too hard. Raw spinach. I love raw spinach. Do you? Yes. Do you eat it by itself? Yeah. Yeah? Cool. Okay, hear me out. Okay. okay. Um, Legend of Zelda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Link's tunic. Uh -huh. Okay. Nice. That's a good green. That's a good that one. That is a good green. Okay. Good job. And now we're gonna let that dry just for a second and I'm going to talk while we let that dry. So, a couple things that I, uh, I just wanna call out, which is, um, if you look at our eyes here, like, and this is where our brain likes to play tricks on us, right? Because we know that the whites of our eye, our brain is like, those are white, but they're not actually, they're not paper white. And so like, and if, you're, if you are like, Sarah, you're a liar, take a white piece of paper and go in the mirror and then hold it up to your eyes and you'll see that they're actually, they lean different colors. And so like, I just wanna point out when we do the whites of the eyes, I left some places that are white and that's for glare because our eyes are wet, but the other areas are um, different values. So I have a little bit of blue in there. I have a little bit of pink. Um, so I just wanna call that out um, to begin with. Also, as we do more layers, I want to say that the areas that I'm gonna start avoiding as we add layers is right here. You see how like the middle of my nose is kind of highlighted and the top of my brow, okay? And then right here, right underneath my eyebrows, because if you feel, and maybe your bone structure is different, but you have, you have brow bone underneath your eyebrows, even when there's not hair there, right underneath. Yeah, do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we're leaving that highlighted because that's sticking out compared to when we go in with our eyelids. Wow. Okay, so we have that highlight on both sides and then right at the top part of our cheeks, right here. This is where our bone, our cheekbones start to come in on our skull or the bottom of our eye socket, I guess. So those are the areas that I'm going to be avoiding as we do these next steps and add more layers. Um, I will say, and I'm just gonna call this out now, Taylor, if mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. So looking at Taylor's here, so we're focusing more on this area, okay? If you go too far on the edge, it might throw you off mm -hmm. as you build form on this and ignore this, just so you know. Okay. But you can always like add a little, I mean like, you're a very talented artist, <laughs> so you can do what you think is right. <laughs> but I'm just saying for you guys, at home, if you paint too far outside of the area on the skin tones, then it's gonna kinda look wonky because you're like, well, you're not gonna see this anymore. You're gonna be like, why is her forehead all weirder? You know what I mean? I did notice that. It kinda looks like a sleep mask. Like, yeah. it goes yeah. so far. <laughs> it kinda reminds me of Mrs. Doubtfire when she like gets the mask. Like, but you know, okay. Do you know what I'm talking yes. about? This okay. is all I'm thinking about. <laughs> that hot dog joke is so funny in that movie. Gosh, I love that movie. So I just wanna call that out now because um, I don't want you guys to feel like you're failing when really it's not. It's just that we're not addressing those areas, but it will affect the overall form of your painting. Okay. Mm, I don't know if this is really... Are you going in with pencil next? Is that why you're... Yeah. Okay. 
I'm gonna go in with pencil. I'm gonna do one more layer of pencil, but what we can do is address some of the eyes since we haven't done that yet while we wait for the skin to dry. So, and this is where I thought pencils might be really good to do something like this because controlling small strokes with a paintbrush is kind of tricky and takes practice. It's a little bit easier with a pencil because we're used to how a pencil works. So, um, the eyelashes, the eyebrows, the detail parts, if you guys just wanna use your watercolor pencils for that, you totally can. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, oh, hold on, I gotta sharpen. I'm just gonna do a light blue across the iris of my pencil, of my <laughs> eye. Mm -hmm. um, and there are glare spots at the very top. Those are the only parts that you're going to avoid. And the, you can avoid the pupil too, because the pupil will be doing in black. Could you push your eyes a little up and to the right? There. Perfect, thank you. When I first started drawing portraits, I would literally draw them just the outline of the face, like our, like this. <laughs> and I thought that was right, I thought that was normal. <laughs> and then the first time I ever added like shading and like uh -huh. the dimension of that it like completely changed it, it changed your changed it all yeah well i think that's like the beginning part to it right is like understanding just the the hard lines and that's why portraits are kind of tricky because there aren't a ton of really hard lines mm -hmm. it's all value and so that's why it's really like a more difficult thing to do because you have to have a really good understanding of value and value control um, to like make it feel like real, mm -hmm. you know? I will say, okay, so I, I brought up makeup before, but it's actually very helpful with art. If you go watch any makeup tutorial on YouTube and you watch where they add highlight is the same places that we leave the white on here Mm -hmm. And then even contour mm -hmm. around the nose, like that. It just kind of helps you understand where the darkest and lightest parts are. Yeah. Interesting. And it's true, like the rules of makeup are also true for the rules of like drawing and painting, where if you want something to stick out, you make it a lighter value. If you want something to recede, you make it a darker value. That's why you contour your cheekbones, because um, it makes them look. And then you do a highlight at the top, it makes them look like ba bam, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I grow facial hair. <laughs> I don't have that option. <laughs> I wish I did. Okay, so we started with the blue. And then, I'm still, mine's still kind of wet. So uh, let's put the pupils in, why not? So I'm just using black. And these ones you can press hard. And we will do the rest of the eye with our paint but I just want to kind of start it. That blue with the black pupil looks amazing. Looks nice. It looks like the eyes of when the, the beast in Beauty and the Beast mm -hmm. turns from mm -hmm. beast mm -hmm. to man. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes! I thought that too, actually on the step outs. This step right here, I was just yeah. like, that reminds me of the prince on Beauty and the yes. Beast when he turns into the prince. Yep. Around the same ah. page. Okay. Same step out page. <laughs> Pupils, uh, sorry, I'm like, I do yeah. portraits outside of work, and so that's just throwing in some little tidbits. Love it. The pupils, it's important to keep them kind of center, or like even with each other, because if one of them is off, it's going to look cross-eyed. Yes. Know? I do that sometimes, but I feel like my eyes are kind of cross-eyed a little bit anyway, so it's just like... My daughter has a really bad cross eye. It's, it's so, so funny. cute. So cute. <laughs> okay. Um, and we could also do like the the whites of the eye. Also, I'm going to take I'm going to take my blue and green and red and just very like the lightest, even lighter than what we did our skin tones. I'm going to paint. I'm going to do a little wash layer. I keep saying wash. It's like a wash. Layer in the whites of the eyes. Are you leaving any spaces? I'm leaving the highlight on the left and the right, like the little highlights that I have with him that were in the outline. And then also the bottom, this, um, this lip right here, 
What did you call that? Taylor? Water line. Your, the water line will also leave that highlighted. Okay. And if like you didn't already, like I'm looking, it looks like on my right hand side, I left my water line highlighted, but my left hand side, I didn't. That's not a big deal. I just know then that when I add more value that I'm going to avoid that waterline to keep it as light as I possibly can. Oh, oh green. St. Patrick's Day. It's a green day. St. Patrick's Day. Okay. I think mine is dry enough that I'm gonna do my second layer of watercolor um, pencil. So this is where you're gonna kind of look at the skin tones that you already have and then decide what more color you want to add of what. Um, so like when I did this layer, I focused more on like reds and browns because I wanted it to be a darker value. But if yours is reading too red already, then maybe you do green instead to kind of offset that red. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my red and my brown. And I'm going to focus on the darker values here. So this is where sometimes having your outline is handy because I'm like, okay, where did I? So this section, this section, and then right underneath is kind of where I want to add these darker values. So I'm just going to do another wash. And also, I just want, Taylor, I want to give you permission that if you decide to do something different than how I'm doing it, feel okay. free to. Okay. I think it's helpful for people to see that there are different ways that you can approach the same project. And so like, because you are an artist and you are comfortable with portraits, um, feel free to make any adjustments that you see fit. Okay. Unless it's better than mine. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we don't compare work here. The just kidding was too soon. Was, you had to wait two more seconds. I was nervous. I know you were. Because I said that, I'm like, no, I don't want people to think that I'm serious. <laughs> Let's I got to have that keen in confidence of being okay of being like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know Fast Break's the best candy bar. <laughs> it's green, too. It's one of my favorite things. Liar. <laughs> it's not true. See, I didn't believe that one. Good job. Thank you. It's, it's okay. I'll, I'll sneak one in later. <laughs> I'm going to introduce a little bit of yellow in mine as well. I just felt like that was a color I wanted to introduce. But be be careful with too much of one of these colors, just be aware because it will overpower, which I want to point out is not bad. That's not a bad thing um, because we're focusing more on creating form instead of getting the perfect skin tone. Um, because we're mixing here, all of our skin tones are going to look different. I mean, already me and Taylor's look very different from each other and they will at the end. You'll see that our colors are going to be super different. That's okay. I want to I want to point out that like because we're not focusing on doing one person exactly and doing an exact replica of this one specific person, I'm not focusing too much on getting the right color ratio. I just want to get you guys comfortable with creating a skin tone. And they it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. And you can see already, like, if we stop and look at this already, I feel like my left side already has a little bit more form than my right side. And that's just because I've done one layer of a darker value in those darker value areas. So it's not happening yet, but the really exciting part is when, like, you're th when it's three-dimensional and it starts to emerge, that's when it's super exciting. Yes. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. I'm also going to take my brown and do a dark eyelid at the top. Okay, like that. And then we do have an eyelid crease in the back here that I'm gonna put into. And again, if you at this point are judging your picture, stop. Because this, that is not fair to your painting and it's not fair to you at this point. It is not done enough for you to even have an opinion on it yet. So don't fall into that trap that every step of the, along the way it's beautiful and perfect because that is not true. 
And also I just want to point out like when I was talking about color, skin tones, when things like looking at this, like I can tell that's a really strong yellow area right there. You see that? Mm -hmm. But like if like when things are put together, sometimes you can't even really tell like when things like that pop out. So I don't want you to most of the time it's the artist that sees those and not like the viewer. I honestly didn't notice the highlights until you started to point them out. Yeah. So. It's because our brains, man. Our brains just are like, that information, like they're super efficient. So they try to do things like quickly and like your brain understands form so quickly that you have to like point things out for like us to actually see it, you know? Yeah. It's amazing how much work our brain does for us without like us having to tell it to. Ooh, wouldn't that be exhausting if we had to tell it? Yeah. Like, oh, right, that's a face. <laughs> oh, can you do a better job, please? Give yourself reviews at the end of the week. <laughs> They're like performance and stuff, how yeah. quickly. Okay, I'm gonna get some red. And maybe, I don't know, I'm feeling like I'm gonna do a little bit of blue. Just to probably, just to like tone down a little bit the colors that I'm just putting in here. But again, you don't, you don't have to. That is totally up to you. It is so cool to see all these colors on the eyes. Yeah. And I just want to say, I'm only going to do two layers of watercolor pencil. This is going to be my second one. But you guys are free to deviate. You know, if you feel more comfortable with the watercolor pencils and you're kind of nervous to go into the paint and you want to stay in the pencil area for a little bit longer, you do as many layers as you think is necessary. This is your painting. You are the artist. And the best way to learn and improve is just to make decisions and do it. And you'll learn from it. And it might not be perfect every single time, but like, you'll learn so much more that way to just try things and see what works for you than being having to be told every step exactly what you have to do which is which is a great way to learn too it just depends on what your goal is at the end you know okay i feel good about that i'm going to start blending if you're not ready yet that's okay so again i'm going to be using my round six just some water and i'm going to be kind of looking at the form can you push that up into the right, please? Yeah. Thank you. Now, even on the areas that I am, like I went and I darkened and then the ones that I left alone, I still want that transition to be smooth. So I'm kind of working that area back and forth so it doesn't feel super blocky. Peppermint. That's the third thing I like that's green. Ooh. Ooh, I like uh, limes. Ooh, yeah, limes. Sometimes limes and just like 
a little water or, you know, over some tacos or food. Or, chicken. Or like pho. Oh, oh yes. So good. Oh, cilantro. Mm, yeah. Do you know that <clears throat> genetically, um, people have genetic markers where cilantro takes tastes like soap to them, and then some people don't. So, like Michael, my husband doesn't like cilantro because it tastes like soap. To what? Him. And that's a genetic trait. Where, like for me, it doesn't taste like soap to me. I love cilantro. It's heavenly. Yeah. Yeah. So. What the heck? Yeah, isn't that interesting? You know what tastes like soap? What? Ginger. <clears throat> Ginger tastes like like a weird soap. Okay, like a ginger soap. Like a ginger soap. <laughs> like if you were to make ginger, like ginger into flavored soap, an antibiotic soap, <laughs> antibacterial soap, it, it would taste like ginger. Okay, and then I'm also gonna blend out my the blues of my eyes right now. So, and also I just want to let you guys know that whenever you blend out watercolor pencil, it always turns a lighter value, like pretty much. That's okay. And I'm trying to push, if I have extra like pigment on my blue, I'm pushing it towards the top because the top of our eyes are gonna be a darker value than the bottom of our eyes. So I'm kind of like blending up the irises. Okay. And then I'm also gonna really just lightly blend out the whites around my eyes. And I want this to be kind of a neutral color. It's okay if it leans, you know, blue or pink, but we don't want it to be like the same color of our skin tone. And this is where I, f I think art in general is super interesting because colors and values inform each other if they're next to each other. So for example, if I didn't have my skin here and I was holding up this white sheet of paper next to this white eye, then this looks green, okay? But because it's actually next to these skin tones, these darker values, if I take out the white of my paper, the whites are actually still reading white. That is what is so interesting. And so like your colors are gonna read differently depending on what color is next to it. That's why sometimes you even see comments about like painter's tape. Like we use painter's tape to block off our, our painting, but most of the time like professional artists don't use color tape that's colored because it affects how the painting goes because you have this big blue border around it. So you like have to, and so you make decisions when there's a blue border around it and you take that blue border off and you're like, okay, that actually affected what I painted. Does that make sense? Totally. It's super, super interesting. And so like, I just want to point out here that like, that's one of the like, I don't know, little tricks that I find so interesting about art in general is that like colors play tricks on each other depending on why they're next to each other and values play tricks on each other depending on what's next to it. Super interesting. Okay, okay, it's, it's going great. And we're starting to kind of have a little bit of form here. Now we're ready to move on to the um, paint part, okay? I'll go back in with colored pencil at the very end when I'm doing details, but for the most part, I'm gonna go into paint. So if you're not ready for that, um, maybe pause at this point if you need to do another layer. I just realized I didn't blend this out. Sorry, let me blend this out really quick. Okay, okay, so now we are on step three, okay? And you guys are doing so great. So if you're getting upset because this is difficult, it is difficult. Take a breather, get a fast break. Yes. <laughs> Number and one green candy bar in North America. There we go. <laughs> Take a breath. And now I'm gonna mix, um, I'm gonna start doing some layers on with paint. So I'm gonna pretty much start mixing my colors together. I'm gonna grab a little azure. I'm gonna grab a little honey that's gonna make green. I'm gonna add magenta to set that off and I'm just gonna see what color I get. Okay, that's still really green. So I'm gonna grab more magenta. Okay, so now that's like a good brown. I like that brown. So I'm gonna have some of that brown and then I'm gonna grab some honey brown and some magenta 
get like more of a pinkish color. And I'm gonna add some water to that because now I have this nice tan color. So I'm just mixing different browns here pretty much. Wow. So now I'm going to start utilizing these paint colors within my painting. Now the darker browns you'll probably want to save for the areas that are super, super dark. For example, the area right here is going to be really dark compared to the area right here. And the reason for that is because it actually goes in further <laughs> right here and it's next to something that pokes out too. So your nose pokes out, it's going to have a highlight. It's also going to leave a shadow because it's poking out from your face. So this is going to be a darker value than over here where it's more flat, even though it goes in slightly. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to take some of this brown. And Taylor, you're welcome to mix your own colors or do okay. what you need to do. Um, you might just keep going with colored pencil too because <laughs> she likes, she's her, uh, she's a colored pencil artist. So, um, so I'm going to take this brown and like right here at the ridge, kind of like where my brow or my eye sockets meet my nose. I'm going to put that darker value in. Would you push that up a little bit, please? Yeah. Thank you. And then I'm just going to take water and I'm going to blend out. Now I'm going to grab some of this like pinkish red, pinkish brown that I have and go to the bottom of my eyelid. And I, it's kind of funny because sometimes when I get lost on a painting or if I'm like, I don't know if you guys saw that, but like I paused and I felt my own eye because I'm like, wait, does this need to stay shadowed all the way to the end kind of thing. So I was, I was testing on my own face. So like, that sounds a little bit silly, but that's what's helpful about painting something that we all possess. You can just like check on yourselves. And it's interesting because me and Taylor were comparing our like, we both did eyes and faces and like my skin tones naturally tend to go more green yellow brown and Taylor's tends to go more like um, peach like pink mm -hmm. I would say like a little bit more vibrant in color so I love that you're painting this with me so you guys can see the differences and what's interesting is if you were to look at these separately and not right next to each other they wouldn't seem so different so like uh, we'll do that at the end here I'll show you guys what I mean when I say that I'm going underneath the eyelids. We got the eyelids right behind. We got that, that little crease where you kind of get crow's feet a little bit right at the end of your eye here. And I just want to point out something right here. So when I first put in my brown, I did a pretty strong edge curve right here to what where our outline was. And I'm kind of blending that edge a little bit because this is what's so interesting about nose noses is like it's it's not a straight up, straight across rectangle poking out of your face. It's more like a triangle. And so like that's why the highlight is really just in the middle. And then we have a medium value and we have a dark value. Do not do dark value and then this whole thing highlight and then dark value again because that's gonna make your nose read really flat and square. So if you want it to feel kind of like it's pointed, like that, that natural curve, um, you gotta blend in the middle a little bit to transition to that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Only makes sense because I'm feeling my nose while you describe it. 
I'm just kidding. It makes sense with words. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, my plan worked. And then he said, just kidding. So. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay. And I, and then like, this is where knowing color theory is interesting, right? Because I painted this and I'm like, I'm feeling really good about this, but I am noticing that this is reading really green, this area right here. That's not a problem. I'm just gonna take like a little bit of magenta and honey brown that has a little bit more magenta in it. And I'm gonna just put that over top. And that is going to tone down the green without making it pink. Isn't that just so cool? Amazing. Okay, and it's at this point for me that I'm like, all right, I'm starting to get a person here. Okay, this is starting to take form. I know a guy that looks like this. Yeah? Yeah. Is it you? No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are not that blue. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take a break from skin tones and I'm gonna do the eyebrows. Now eyebrows, what you wanna do with eyebrows is you wanna do a base color of eyebrows and then like, um, you want that value to be like a medium value and that leaves room for you to do highlights and shadows. So I'm gonna just do a brown. No, you're doing great. <laughs> you go, you go and you fly. <laughs> fly. <laughs> what I'm not sure. I don't know why. But it I felt just wanna right. do this. It felt right for me to say it. I just love it when people just like go, even when I would teach like beginning like watercolor floral workshops and somebody never like painted before and I'm like teaching them and they're just doing their own thing. I loved it. I was just, they're like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, don't be sorry. You're having a blast. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I will never interrupt that. Oh. Cause like, so cool. When creativity takes over. Yeah. Or like, I, I think. I think just adults in general have a hard time letting themselves have fun, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to art. Um, and if they're like trying something new, they're really afraid of like doing something wrong or messing it up. And so they like really like just kind of wait, which I understand. I completely understand. Um, but so when, so when I see people not having to struggle with that and just like really enjoy making marks on a paper with paint or whatever they're using it's i feel like that's such a magic magical moment that like i would never yell at someone to stop you know that is magical okay. so i start to have my eyebrows here. And I just want to point out that these are a little bit too perfect. That's a tricky thing with eyebrows too. Some people's eyebrows are perfect. Okay, let's just put that out there. Yeah. It, it happens. Yes. Mine are not. I don't, like, I have like straight hairs and all this stuff. Most people don't have perfect eyebrows because perfect eyebrows usually means you're really, really good at makeup and it's like makeup perfect eyebrows, which is amazing and that's a skill. But like most eyebrows have little fuzzy hairs around the edges and it's not like a super clean drawn on line, right? So like, this is my base for my eyebrows. And then like, I'm gonna just kinda go and like just blend out on the edges just a little bit so it doesn't feel like mm. I just like kinda, so it doesn't feel like I painted them on pretty much, you know what I mean? There's like a transition period. And then I'll go back over with a darker brown and do little hairs. And this is where you can use your watercolor pencil too if you feel more comfortable. But you see I kind of did some straight hairs here. Mm -hmm. I'll go back over and do that later. But we're just putting down our base. And it still looks funny. It's okay. This painting still is going to look funny until the very end when we do finish off the eyes and put in the eyelashes. That is when it will come together. So until then, sit tight. Come together. Right now. Okay. So now I'm kind of on step four. And this is the part where I, I'm going to do a second wash, but this is where 
I want you to be more particular about where you're adding your darker values. For me, I feel pretty good about the different values that I have going on. I just need to deepen some of the darker areas. For example, I'm gonna focus on right here where it meets the nose. I'm gonna focus on my um, uh, eyelid line. Yes. Crease. Crease, oh, thank you. crease. Thank you, and then like, I'm not gonna touch too much the whole, like all of the hashed area, cause like I don't need to. I put a dark enough value there that if I keep messing with it, that would look extreme. So I just need to like, now I'm just gonna be more mindful of where I'm putting it. So I'm gonna mix more brown. And you can see we're just mixing as we grow, go. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling you again, magenta is gonna be your friend to balance out the blue and the um, honey brown. Honey brown reads really yellow green, um, which is pretty, but like that's how you're gonna counteract that, okay? And it might be good to get a little bit of purple in there. I caught myself trying to make my skin tone less red like mm -hmm. yours and now it's kind of got like a bunch of different things going on i'm digging so, it so yeah i think you should just keep going with that that to say though if you're leaning more one way or the other it's not wrong just keep going with what you're doing you yeah know? yeah and that's why sometimes it's helpful to have people painting next to you and sometimes it's not because we always think that the next person's we should be doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of deviate from what we feel is right because we're trying to, I realize I'm saying this during a tutorial where you guys have come just to paint with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm saying like sometimes that's tricky because um, we, we're afraid we trust another person's judgment over our own, which is not always true. So I just want to point out that maybe your judgment on your painting is better than my judgment on my painting. And you have the right to ignore me. Okay. Done. Done. Wait, does that apply to me as well? <sighs> Kenan. <laughs> and this is why you don't get paid. No, Oh, Taylor, I was going to say you should keep the eyebrows light like that. It makes Ooh. those eyes. <laughs> well, she's a brunette now. <laughs> okay. And then, so I kind of just like darken some of these areas. And I, again, I want to say, I'm giving you guys permission as well as myself. If I need to go back into an area, area even though I thought it was done, I can do that because as you add more, it will change the colors and the values that you have already put down. Your painting will inform you as you go. And again, you are going to have different like um, blooms. You're gonna have different hard edges. Don't let that trip you up, okay? Just go with it. Dang, okay. Sorry, I just had a second of like, all right, this is going okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to use my round two and start doing a little bit more detail work. So I'm going to actually grab some brown or you can do like a dark just a darker value. And I'm gonna put in my um, eyelid crease. Okay. And I mean, I have to turn my paper sideways because. Okay. And don't stress too much about it because this actually mostly gets covered up with like our eyelashes and stuff. I'm just trying to show like there is depth there and then this is this is the interesting part okay so if I'm looking at this eye 
So I put in my eyelid crease. Do you see how there's a highlight right above my eyelid crease? Yes. That's making the top of my eyelid look heavy on my eye. You know how some people have heavy top lids? Uh -huh. That's why, is because that highlight is right there. Where, if I take a little bit of a different value and kind of do a little shadow there, then my mm -hmm. eyelid no longer looks what? as heavy because the highlight is now near the top, so it feels lifted instead of at the bottom. Dang. Did that communicate on camera? Yeah, totally. Yes. Yes. So if your eyelids are looking too heavy, look at where your highlight is and make sure it's not right above the eyelid crease. You might not be sleeping right. <laughs> Gosh, it, I can't wait for the day when I can sleep through the night. Arlo is almost a year and I have not slept through the night since he has been born. <laughs> and I'm dying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Even this morning, he woke up at 3 a.m. fresh as a daisy, just like ready to go. I tried everything to put him back to sleep. He wouldn't go to sleep. And so Michael was just like, I'll take him upstairs. You get some rest because he's a dream. He is. So he took care of Arlo. I'm like, what time do you finally go back to sleep? He was like 5.30, he finally went back to sleep. So poor Michael hasn't gotten a lot of sleep. No, he has not. Okay. Now, I do wanna say that because I added that darker value on that eyelid and I blended it out, I kinda lost my um, eyelid wrinkle a little bit. What do I, what is it called? Eye crease? Eye, Eye crease. <laughs> I'm calling it like five different things. I like the wrinkle one. So, I, so if that happens to you, which it just happened to be, I'm gonna wait for it to dry, I'll put that crease back in there. The crease wrinkle. The crease. The, wrinkle line. No, the eye, gosh dang The it. eye line wrinkle crease. Keenan, you're messing me up. This is what you get for not paying me. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on me, you've actually been. Like, what if you were just like saying all this stuff and I had no idea? <laughs> yes. That'd be so funny. Okay, I also just want to say that if you like, and Taylor's doing an awesome job of this, if you painted or drew really far out from the sides of your eyes on this way, you have to make that a darker value because your head is actually turning away. Okay, so if you keep it like a light value or an even value, then your head is going to look huge because really like after the ends of your eyes, that's where your skull rounds. Okay, so all of this, even though we know it's here, it's really on the side. So you have to think of foreshortening and you have to think of darker values along the side. Keenan, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. If you put on the sides of your, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas if you don't, and if you leave that lighter, then what you're doing is it makes your head look like this. <laughs> and then there's like this chunk right there. It throws me off. So I, I've, I learned that with portraiture. Make sure that as it's receding, darker values. Okay. Check. Okay. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I can pay more attention to my eyes now. So. I'm gonna grab my round two, and I'm going to take azure blue and just get a darker blue color. So if you wanna mix that with a little bit of magenta, if you wanna throw in a little honey, you can. And you can even make it more green if you want. I mean, irises are interesting in themselves. There are so many different color variations within there, so have fun. And near the top here, I'm gonna put in this dark blue. Now remember to avoid your glare, your highlight glare, and your iris. I mean your pupil. Okay, and then I'm also going to put in a little bit of this blue at the bottom because usually, and everybody's eyes are different, but usually there's a darker color along the edge of your iris and then it lightens up as it gets closer to the center.
Have you ever seen someone with like ice blue eyes? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's almost like a pale, like a, uh, I don't mean, know, like, it's so pretty. So pretty. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna try and mix an even darker color. So I'm going to mix all three colors together to get like almost a black. But you can put more blue in there to have it like a blue black. And I'm going to do one more wash at the very tip. And the reason why is because our eyelids themselves are casting a shadow on the irises, right? So we got to paint that in. So I'm just going to do a little bit darker as it meets the eyelid. And also, if you want to paint a little bit of your pupil with this darker color, you can. If you want to leave it the black that you already did with your pencil, you can. This is your paint. Do you want to push that a little to the right? Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah, now my eyes are starting to pop a little bit. And this is where it's a little bit fun because maybe you're like, I want to give it a little hint of green on this highlight. What? You can. Just like a little... My husband has really gorgeous hazel eyes, so do my girls. So there's like flecks of bright gold in their eyes. Or you can keep it straight blue. You guys can make these eyes brown, whatever you want. Ooh, look at that one. Super <gasps> cool. I love how that turned out. Okay. I like your right eye better. You do? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm just powering through Taylor. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. All right. Is this okay? Sea salt. Does this have the same effect as normal salt? Mm-hmm. Okay. It should actually sea salt. Well, they affect differently. Are you doing little textures in yes. your eyes? That's cool. That's gonna be sweet. Let's see how that turns out. So I just leave it. I would just leave it because okay. you have to wait for it to dry for it to do anything. I haven't used salt with colored pe watercolor pencil and paint mm. though, so I'm not sure. Okay, okay. If we'll it works see. the same. But that's a really cool idea. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna take. I'm mixing a really really dark value here because I want to do the eyelid line, and this person is wearing eyeliner. Okay, so usually, like if this, unless they have really thick black eyelashes, there wouldn't be such a thick black line that I'm about to paint. But this this is eyeliner that I'm putting on pretty much. Okay. Okay. And I'm just using my round too. If you want to use a watercolor pencil instead, because you have better control. Feel free. And then on the bottom here, and actually, I'll do this using a pencil. I have my tear line. Water line? Water, Water line. line works too. Water line. <laughs> tear wrinkle. So if you look at your eye closely, you have that little lid right here. Don't touch it. But like, look at it. If you can't, <laughs> <laughs> just look at it's it. It's just like a. It's it just it. You'll see it. It's a lip, <laughs> pretty much. It was very confusing to me when I first started putting on eyeliner, because I'm like, do I do it on that line or underneath? And anyways, I hope I'm not alone in that, because that threw me off for years. Mm -hmm. But I figured it out. <laughs> and um, anyways, so we got to define that. So we got to define that edge and then underneath the edge as well. Okay, on both sides. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of my red because right here our tear ducts are usually pink within there, so I'm gonna do a little bit of pink. And I even might do one more little swoosh of a color on the whites of my eyes. Um, and you can even take some of the skin tones that you already have laid down. Like if you don't wanna like paint with colored pencils or something, I could just pull color from what's already around it since it's such a light value. Just be careful because you could like end up pulling too much.
And then let's say you're like, oh, I don't know, I feel like that's too dark. See if you can lift some up with your paper towel. You know, like, play with it. Because you can lift with watercolor. Not a ton, but sometimes just enough. There we go. That feels better. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna put my little um, eyelid crease back in because I blended it out on that side accidentally. And then I'm gonna take this dark brown and I'm gonna do my eyebrow hair. So this is just gonna be a little like thin flicks throughout. And it can go above a little bit your initial layer. We want it to actually. That's how we make it feel like it's not painted on, is to have these little stray little fellas hanging out. And I have to turn my paper the other way to do my flicks. And let's try it with a pencil. Let's see what see what that's like. I'm gonna grab my brown and make it sharp so it's a and, oh yeah. So if that's easier for you to use than a paintbrush, go for it. That's sweet. And again. I think I heard a makeup person say this, your, your eyebrows are sisters, not twins, okay? So they are gonna be slightly different shapes from each other. That's okay. Hmm. Isn't that nice? I like that. Yeah, I was like, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, just kinda like looking. I think I'm ready to add my lashes. I'm gonna actually make the glare on my left a little bit. I think it's a little too big. So I'm just going to make a little thing here. There we go, that feels better. And if you're at this point getting to a place where you just keep on tweaking and messing like so much and you're feeling frustrated, maybe that's a sign for you to just walk away for just a, just a little bit. Because sometimes when that happens, it's because we can't truly see what we're doing and we're starting to feel frustrated and um, we just keep on like messing with it, messing with it. And the best thing to do sometimes, walk away from it and then come back to it with fresh eyes. So then you can really see, what do I really need to do to this painting? I am going to do just like a, a light wash across the entire uh, forehead here. Just because we've added so much darker values to the eyes and the sockets, I don't want the forehead T to feel separate from the eyes. Okay, I want them to still feel like they belong on the same body. So I'll have to, so sometimes I have to go back in and kind of just like, just slightly darken the value. Oh, that feels better. Okay. And now, if everything is dry, and if you're feeling brave, let's do these eyelashes. Okay? Let's do it. I'm gonna use black for the bottom ones. So, the thing I just wanna point out about eyelashes, and I'm just gonna draw this really quick and big on this scratched piece so you know what I'm talking about. If this is your eye shape, people sometimes, they think of eyelashes and they think of this. Monsters Inc. Okay. Oh, yeah. But 
what we're not acknowledging with that is that this is round, okay? And your eyelashes are going to form to the roundness. So on the end, they go this way. In the middle, they kind of come more straight up. And then when you get to the opposite side, they go the opposite way, okay? But not as like, that's pretty extreme. But like, if you look at your eyelashes. They're curled. They're curled. So they're gonna follow and they're also, they're curled and they're also on a rounded form. So they will curl across as well. So they're gonna change directions on the eye. You see what I'm saying? Yes. There's my eye. And then if you get really detailed into the eye, you actually see the reflection of your eyelashes in there, in the glare, but we're not there. What? We're not doing that. Taylor, that's looking awesome. Thank you. Intense. Okay. All right. I feel better with my paintbrush, so I'm going to use my paintbrush for this. But if you guys want to use your watercolor pencil, go for it. Also, I just want to say that if you're a watercolorist and if you want to use a pencil or a pen for detail work, it's not cheating. You guys have every right to mix media and I don't think it's bad. Just so you know. How is any art form bad? Well, it, I guess it's in line with the same thing where there are purists who are like, don't ever use black paint or whatever, which like, I understand. But like, if you want to use black paint, use black paint, you know? You are the creative here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm mixing a really dark color. And at the top, I always get a little bit nervous on this. So I'm gonna do thin lines, curled up. And sometimes when I'm feeling really nervous, I just go for it and I stop thinking. Or else I'll never put that paintbrush to the paper, you know. Start off thin and small first because you can always add more later. And then if you, I'll do the bottom in pencil just to show you like how I would do it. So I'm gonna kind of define that space. And the bottom ones, unless you have really dark, thick lashes, you're only gonna see like one or two. So just a little bit here and there. Nice. But don't do even like, when you get to our eyelashes, don't. It's gonna flatten that whole thing. All of that form that we worked really, really hard to get, it will flatten it. So remember, your brain is gonna want these eyelashes, especially on the bottom, to be evenly spaced, evenly the same size, and the same color, and that's just not how it goes. What's always tricky for me is actually doing the left side of eyes eyelashes do you struggle with that yes I do because I'm right-handed so it's easy for me to do this but left-handed I wonder if it's easier for you to do the left eye mm. but I have to like go up and around so I'm sorry I'm all in your no, you're good. <laughs> and I get to the middle so I'm gonna kind of start changing directions here and also your eyelashes are so thin they overlap you have some that kind of go slightly wonky. Some gather together so they look thicker. So don't feel like your eyelashes all have to be like so perfect. Okay, I'm gonna do, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do one more dark layer across here because I just held it up and I noticed that my shadow on my left hand side is darker my right but then after that I'm feeling pretty good
Wow, that's changing the shape of the nose a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I decided to add a little bit more shadow or darker value along the edge here, and that's affecting the form. <laughs> so interesting. Dang. I think that's also why like portraiture is so tricky is because like the slightest value change on something is going to like really affect the structure of it, you know? Okay, that's feeling really good, but I'm noticing that my forehead is re reading really green while my eyes are like skin tones are reading red. Hmm. So I'm just gonna do a little wash of magenta to counteract that. Asparagus. Ugh, I love asparagus. There's like half a second every time you listen to something new. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that feels better. Okay. Yeah. All right. I feel pretty good about this. I think my lady's done. Something I'm noticing, I'm dipping my colored pencil in water. That oh, yeah. That we learned. Mm -hmm. But it's very easy to um, get globs. Oh, <laughs> uh, like the, does like the mm. pigment kind of gloop up a little bit? It like comes out super pigmented. And oh, it doesn't, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And at this point, I'm kind of just tweaking. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna, well, okay, one more thing, sorry. <laughs> I feel like the eyelashes on the bottom just need to be slightly darker. Not a lot, just a little. Let them stick out a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to call it good. Taylor, yours is looking awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, whew, that was a long tutorial, you guys. But you did awesome. And again, I just want to call out, this is a difficult tutorial. So if it's your first time watercoloring and you feel like you failed, you did not fail. This is just hard. You just need to get more familiar with form and watercolor and watercolor pencils and paint in order to do this. But that doesn't mean that you can't. And anytime learning something, if you're interested in it, all you have to do to get better is just keep doing it. That's just put in the time. So if your goal is to eventually paint portraits and you didn't succeed at this, and you feel like, okay, I'm just not meant for that. Not true, not true. Just put in the effort, put in the work, put in the time, and eventually you will get there. And do you know what, time passes anyway. You know what I mean? So like. Like that. Might as well, might as well put in that work. And then in a few years, maybe six months, maybe a month, maybe five years. It changes for everybody, but you can get to where you want to go when it comes to art and when it comes to your art skill. So. I have a great quote. Yeah. The best time to plant a tree is 15 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is right now. Yes. Oh, I got little <laughs> chills. I got little chills. <laughs> plant that tree, you guys, if this is what you want. If your goal is to do this and do it well, plant that tree now. You guys can get there. So, um, Taylor, yes. you've been amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Also, you let's... Have... Yeah, I was going to say the skin tone. Let's hold them up. So first, there's Taylor. So oh, I want sorry. you to hold up Taylor's. Okay, so this is beautiful. And it looks like she did a little bit more colored pencil work too, which mm -hmm. is great, or watercolor pencil work, um, which makes sense because that's, you feel more comfortable with the pencils, which is amazing, so that's beautiful. Now, I'm gonna put that down and then I'm gonna hold up mine, okay? So this one I focused a little bit more on watercolors. Okay, so you looked at them separately and you're like, okay, skin color, skin color. Now put them next to each other and you're gonna see mine is reading more green, more yellow. So like, but
But if this was totally by itself without that, would you have seen that? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why it's so interesting to look at. So anyways. (laughs) (laughs) So um, anyways, thank you guys for this. I can't wait to see how you guys do. And even if it's not a success, post it anyway. Make other people feel better and don't. You're not alone. You know what I mean? It's, It's not just you that's struggling. So let's share it. If you're on Instagram, tag us. Let's go make art or hashtag let's make art. If you're on Facebook, we have a watercolor Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. You've been a pleasure. You've been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you guys for painting with us. And we'll see you next time. Bye. (laughs) I got your pinky. (laughs)